Hello, and welcome to today's Health Foundation webinar, where we'll be talking about the role of the NHS as an anchor institution and how the health system can be working with others to build healthier communities. We've had a really incredible number of people sign up for the, today's webinar, over 1,000 of you. So just to say thank you so much for finding time in your busy days to listen in on this conversation. And I think it's a real reflection of the growing interest and momentum we're seeing in this conversation around the NHS as an anchor and the broader role the system can be playing in prevention. So by way of introduction, my name is Sarah Reed. I'm an Improvement Fellow here at the Health Foundation, and I'm going to be chairing today's conversation, as well as providing a bit of an overview of what we mean by the concept of anchor institutions and how we think the NHS can be maximizing the social and economic value it brings to local communities. I'll be discussing findings from a report that we published in August that explored what being an anchor really looked like in the NHS context and how NHS organizations can be working differently and more effectively with local partners to be combining their collective influence and having an even greater impact on the health out outcomes in local populations that they serve. This is work that we um, conducted with a range of different partners and its findings are based on real life examples that are happening across the system and some of which you'll be hearing from today. And since publishing the report, we're really pleased and grateful to be able to be working now in partnership with NHS England and Improvement to start to think about how we might scale and spread some of the good practice that's already happening in this area and building on the commitment that they made in the NHS long-term plan for England, which I'll be saying a bit more about at the end. But in terms of what we want to focus on in today's webinar, it's really this key question that our research left us with, which is how can the NHS more consciously be applying and embracing the role it has as an anchor? And how can it be doing that in partnership with others to be maximizing that economic influence that it brings to local communities and it has in a place? So this is what we're here to talk about today. And to do that, I'm really delighted to be joined by two distinguished guests who've been leading both anchor strategies within their organizations, but also in partnership together in the city of Sheffield. So firstly, I'd like to welcome Sandy Carmen, who's Assistant Chief Executive at Sheffield Teaching Hospitals. Thank you. Um, I'm also really delighted to have with us today, um, Dr. Laura White, who is Strategy and Partnerships Manager at Sheffield City Council. And also just to say, we will have plenty of time for Q&A later in the webinar. And thanks so much to those of you who have already submitted questions. And if you haven't already, please do chime in and write in with the questions with the box you see on your screen. Um, we'll be taking live questions. And also just to say that anything we don't get through as part of today's webinar, we'll be taking those questions back with us at the Health Foundation and be thinking about them and having that inform our future work as we enter the next phases of this project. So before I hand it back over to Sandy and Laura, I first just want to provide a bit of scene setting on why we think this is such an important conversation to be having now and what we really mean by the term anchor institution. So the impetus for this work really has been thinking about how the NHS, beyond its role as a deliverer and provider of treatment and care, can have a much broader impact on population health through the strategic influence it has in local economies. And we think that's a really important conversation and one to be thinking about now because of everything we know about what really makes us healthy. So you'll see on the screen here that in that red box there, healthcare services, we know from the best available research that most of our health outcomes actually comes from outside of access to healthcare um, treatment itself. It's these broader determinants, the factors and conditions in which we live, work, learn, and age that have the biggest bearing on our health outcomes. So though it's important that the NHS has everything it needs to deliver safe, effective, timely, and person-centered care, we know that if we focus on healthcare alone, we're not going to be doing everything we can to be improving population health outcomes. And that's really important to be thinking about in the context that we're in, because we're living at a time now where if you live in the most deprived parts of the country, you're likely to die a decade earlier and spend more of your life in poor health than if you lived in the least deprived parts of the country. And those and though those inequalities are driven primarily by factors that sit outside the health system's direct control, the NHS can and should have a more direct role in their solution. And that's something that's so important to be thinking about as well, given the funding settlement and the context in which we are working in. So since about 2010, it is the case that the NHS's funding has been protected relative to other public sector spending. And though the NHS will ne is not and will never be a replacement for the role that other public sector organizations have in those wider determinants of health I mentioned at the start, it is the case that we need to be thinking about how then, given that the NHS is getting a larger share of public resources, are we maximizing the value of NHS spend for health? And what thinking about what anchor institutions are in the NHS as an anchor can help us do is see the ways that the NHS does have a broader influence in places and communities. So what are anchor institutions then? 
These are large public sector organizations that carry with them significant assets and resources that can be channeled in different ways to support community development and regeneration. And they're called anchors because they're rooted in place. They're unlikely to pick up or leave for any reason. So when we think about the NHS then and what makes it an anchor, uh, to illustrate this point, I'll start with employment. So the NHS is the largest employer in the country, making it a critical source of local economic opportunity for, pe for residents and local people. And given what we know about the links between quality work and health, this is a key way the NHS can be driving um, population health and well-being by creating access to better work for more people, particularly those who may be furthest from the labor market, but also in the way that it treats and looks after the one and a half million people who work for the NHS. The health system is also a large spender. So in England alone, hospitals spend about 30 billion pounds a year on goods and services. But the NHS can be dr driving greater value from that spend by thinking about what it buys and how it chooses to buy it. So for example, the NHS can be helping to stimulate local economic development by perhaps shifting more of its spend locally, but it also can improve value by thinking about the organizations that it partners and works with in its own supply chain and who can help achieve its mutual aims around social and economic and social sustainability. The NHS is also a significant owner of land and property, and this is another way that the NHS can have greater community um, impact by thinking about how its land and resources can be converted into other community assets that can't be used for clinical purposes, or for example, are there opportunities to be creating affordable housing or parks with surplus land and buildings? And it's also the case um, that the NHS is a, is a large polluter. It's a, it, given its size and scale, it contributes about 40% to the public sector's overall carbon footprint. And given what we see and hear about how the climate crisis is affecting our health outcomes, this is a key way the NHS, again, can be using its voice and influence to advocate for change in its communities, but also be changing its own organizational practices to support and promote greater environmental sustainability, which will have really important implications for population health. And all of this is to say that none of this is really what about the NHS needs to do in isolation, though there's a lot that can be done at the level of the organization, but it is about thinking about how the NHS can be working differently with partners in its communities to be raising its collective influencing and greater, greater change at scale to improve health around common aims to support these more inclusive economies that do better by the people who live in, live in them. So, to help explain a bit what that looks like, I'm now really pleased to hand it over to Laura, who will be talking about the work she's been leading in Sheffield uh, to, to bring anchors together to support a strategy on how to create more inclusive economies. So, Laura, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah, and thank you for inviting me to take part in the webinar today. It's a great privilege to be able to talk to, talk to and share learning with the people who are leading this agenda. Um, and um, particularly to share a platform with Sandy. Sandy and I have been working together um, in Sheffield for some years now, and it's given me a really positive experience um, of working with the NHS. Um, so as Sarah has explained, my role is a strategy and partnerships manager within Sheffield City Council. And my team invests time and energy in building relationships and working with others in the city to bring maximum benefit to the people of Sheffield. And in this role, I'm fortunate to have the opportunity to work alongside really excellent partners like Sandy. Uh, and I've been invited here today <laughs> to reflect on my experience um, of how we're developing our role as anchor institutions in Sheffield, and in particular on how to build effective collaborations with the NHS in this space. So I'll start off by explaining the Sheffield partnership context, um, our approach and our journey to date, before reflect reflecting on some um, key lessons to take away. So I'm not going to spend too much time on the specifics as I think Sandy will, will go into more of the detail. So first and foremost then, I think that by definition, um, for me, anchor institutions are embedded in place and therefore it's very difficult to be an anchor in any meaningful sense without working alongside partners and communities within that place. And the same is true for the council, the NHS or any other anchor institution. And I think that it's really the starting point for understanding our approach in Sheffield. So our starting point then for this work was the Sheffield City Partnership um, and this uh, executive board of the Sheffield City Partnership was born out of the old local strategic partnership in Sheffield. So it brings together the key public sector agencies, so um, Sheffield Teaching Hospitals, uh, Sheffield CCG, our universities, Sheffield College amongst others, um, alongside representatives of the voluntary and private sectors. Um, and our anchor institutions are therefore well represented on this partnership. But before our attention even turned to the concept of anchor institutions, which was in around mid to late 2017, 
As Sheffield Partners, we were already working together and looking to capture a shared vision for the city through the development of a framework for an inclusive and sustainable economy, which I'll talk about in more detail in a moment. So it's also worth noting that the City Partnership has a role and remit which goes beyond the anchors or the partners on the board itself. And we've worked hard to foster a wider sense of collaboration with people across the city and some sense of what kind of outcomes we could all be working together to achieve. Um, and this, of course, needs to be built on a shared understanding of our goals, our assets and our challenges. So what are those goals and, and challenges then? And what is the context that we're working in in Sheffield? Um, well, as in partners in Sheffield, we're working in a place with some really significant strengths. Um, we have a very strong sense of community and a, a strong and vibrant uh, community sector, over 3,000 organisations. Um, we're also a very green city um, with a lot of green assets. Um, and we're, sa we're a safe and welcoming city. So whilst crime has risen in recent years, um, our violent crime is still uh, lower than that of our core city neighbours, which is a, a real asset of ours. Um, economically, we have a lot of strengths from advanced manufacturing and digital, um, but we all recognise some big challenges around inequality, which impact on people's lives across the city, and of course also impact on how each of us operate and deliver our services. Um, and in Sheffield, this inequality manifests itself very clearly in spatial terms, with a stark east-west divide, but there are many other complexities um, beyond geography which we've sought to bring out in this process. So with that context in mind then, what is our approach to addressing this uh, together and what, where does the anchor concept come in? Well on my slide I've put five points um, which I think are pertinent but I'm going to sum it up today in three. Um, so firstly as I've said we all recognise the need to articulate and embed a vision and this helps us to answer the essential question which is why are we coming together as partners like this? What is the added value that we can bring and what are we trying to achieve? And of course, there's no easy answer to this, and it really is something that you find you are continually revisiting. Um, but it really helps if you do articulate it. And if you don't know where you're trying to get to, then how do you work effectively as anchors? How do you know how and in which direction to re reorientate those resources that we're talking about? Um, so moreover, this needs to be a shared approach because A, it's helpful and it embeds it in the place. Um, and B, because that's how we maximise the impact. We get the bang for the buck if we, if we do that together. Secondly, in terms of our approach then, what are our building blocks? So that's not just the challenges and assets that I spoke of a moment ago, but also the local landscape. We know we're not starting from scratch and anchors don't exist in isolation in their places. So what is the complex web of partners and people who already interact in that space? And to properly understand this, you need to reach out to a wider constituency of people and also foster a wider sense of ownership. And thirdly then, how to take this forward in a practical sense, the where do we go from here, if you like. Um, beyond the vision, what can we commit to doing with what we have? And there needs to be things which are meaningful and workable for all of our partners, of course, including the NHS. So this also had to focus on the actions we could ta take forward and share together. Um, and in the national policy context, in the context of public sector cuts that we're working in, what are the levers and powers at our disposal locally? And this is what led us to explore the concept of anchor institutions in the first place. So I'll now go through these approaches in turn to show how they're reflected in the work we've done so far. So firstly then on the slide you'll see that this is our vision and you can see here that we've looked to sum up our vision in terms of both what an inclusive economy means for Sheffield and what it means for Sheffield people. It's a vision for a thriving successful city where more Sheffielders have access to all the good things that come with this. Um, health and its wider determinants are at the front of centre and out of our vision. Um, we want all Sheffielders to live well. Um, but that's something which resonates with everyone, with all our partners from any sector, and, it, and it's fundamental. And we worked hard to foster a much wider understanding of the economy and its complex relationship with health, happiness and equality of opportunity. Sheffield's economy is not just about GDP, it's about people's lives. Um, and that's something that comes through in our other strategies and approaches, such as the Direct for Public Health report, our health and wellbeing strategy. Secondly then, thinking about our context and our building blocks, you can see here on this slide our commitments and actions, and they're really embedded on in building on our assets. This isn't about starting from scratch, as I've said, but nurturing what works and fostering commitments which help us do more. Um, thirdly then, in terms of the where we go from here and um, the issue of how we take it forward, we were clear that this was not about creating a new standalone strategy owned by one or the other of the partners, um, because to be meaningful, it has to cut across different policy areas, different sectors and different organisations. So this framework is really about influencing what's happening within our organisations as well as across them, finding opportunities where we can and seeking to embed the approach. Of course, there's always a great deal of pragmatism with any of this um, about what we focus on first, and that does come across in our actions. 
as anchors, we need to think about what we do to drive our vision. And Sandy's going to talk in more detail about um, Action 4 around procurement and how this has developed. Um, but in general, this is a process of looking at our behaviour, how we work together, how we engage with others and bring them along, uh, where we spend our money and put our resources, obviously, and who we put at the forefront of this process. So the question of who drives the anchor approach then is really fundamental. And I think it's an area where there is a lot of shared learning actually um, across the partners. Democracy, accountability and engagement are concepts which are very pertinent in a local government context. And obviously the political dimensions of this are ever present for us. But in general, I think that all of the partners are on a journey about what the role of community engagement and asset based approaches have to play in shaping what we're working towards, what we do and, and how we get there. Um, so this brings me back to my earlier point. It's very hard to focus your resources on bringing benefit to your communities if you don't know what that benefit uh, does or should look like. The community, however you define it, should be the starting point and then it's an ongoing process. So that's why we identified as one of our actions um, to focus on people's real experiences and this poster shows one of the methodologies we've used to have these conversations through our partner agencies and this was developed with uh, the University of Sheffield and we've also had a public health funded project which focused on engaging with a particular geographical community um, located close to our anchor institutions and that fed into this. Another action which I think is pertinent um, is our action around creating a set of uh, inclusive Sheffield indicators um, and um, we're doing that with that same department um, linked to a project called Cypher and some embedded researchers in the council and this is focused on how we develop something that's bespoke for Sheffield using quantitative and qualitative data mm. to help us track our progress in achieving outcomes for Sheffield people. It's something which we hope will be useful for our NH par NHS partners and council and others um, in, how, in how they um, do their own activity. So to summarise then, some top tips. Mm -hmm. um, number one, and I know that Sandy will reflect on this too, uh, you need to have good relationships. Um, and of course, like any relationship in life, that means putting some time and work <laughs> into it uh, and some energy. Um, and nothing is perfect, but we're fortunate to have really strong working relationships in Sheffield. I think we have a really strong um, sense of collectivism and pride in the city and shared purpose. Um, so really it is about focusing in on that sense of purpose um, and looking at how we spend our money and how we develop our workforce and to what end what are we trying to contribute to and influence? And what do we all want our city collectively to look like? Mm -hmm. Then you work that through in what you do, how you commission, how you deliver your services and, uh, and your workforce and so on. Um, obviously you need to be op open and honest about where your strengths and opportunities are across the organisations um, and, and share that with one another. What works for one won't always work for another, but there will be learning and we found that with our um, procurement work. Uh, the council have done a lot around ethical procurement and social value um, and apprenticeships. Um, Sheffield Teaching Hospitals have done more around the sustainability stuff that we're learning from. Um, and you need to work hard to get buy-in across all levels of the organisations if you really want to shift things from top level um, decision makers down to the doers. So in the current climate, you're also trying to do more with less, as Sarah talked about, so that can be a hard process. Uh, very importantly, a big part of this is about learning and reflection, and we've been quite explicit about that in the Sheffield City Partnership. One of the big outcomes we want to achieve is that shared learning in itself, something we can build on. Um, so in conclusion then, uh, I think my biggest takeaway is place. Um, for NHS institutions and others, being an anchor is about embedding yourself within your local area. And of course, one of the best ways to do that is by working alongside your, your neighbours and your partners in that place. Great, um, thank you. Really, really helpful, Laura. And I think just to reflect on, um, clearly these, these relationships are not formed overnight. It's just really interesting to hear how you've built off kind of that history of working together and mm -hmm. existing strategies to kind of take this in a new direction and go bigger and broader on this idea of inclusive economy. So thank you so much. And, and the challenges of kind of building consensus across very different organizations. Um, now we're going to hear from Sandy, who's thank going you. to talk us through um, what it's been like from an NHS perspective to be part of this partnership, but then also how to actually apply some of that strategy within an NHS organization. OK, thank you, Sarah. So, as um, Sarah said, I'm the Assistant Chief Executive for Sheffield Teaching Hospitals. I have a dual role, so I'm Company Secretary for the organisation, but amongst other things, I also have an Outward Facing Partnership role, um, most notably working with the two universities and, and with Laura and the Sheffield City Partnership Board. So, as we've heard from Laura, Sheffield is a really diverse and, and vibrant city and hosts a rich um, diversity of health and social care services. But not only that, we have many more opportunities for partnership working across the city with voluntary, independent sector coll colleagues, educational institutions, museums, theatres and community groups, to name but a few. There are many um, areas for partnership. Sheffield Teaching Hospitals is one of the largest teaching hospitals in the country with a range of tertiary 
secondary and, um, importantly, community services. In the context of today's conversation, I feel our values of respect, ownership and unity are particularly important when looking to work in partnership with others and acting as an anchor institution. Um, within the teaching hospitals, we are proud to call ourselves an anchor institution. But in doing so, I'm, I'm very mindful that engaging with any of our anchor organisations won't suit all parts of our community. And I'm very reflective of the need um, to continue to ensure a diverse and culturally sensitive offer that aligns with the needs of all the people of Sheffield. So I want to move on now to describe how within health and care services, there's a much greater focus on system collaboration and working across boundaries. Um, what you see in front of you is the Sheffield Accountable Care Partnership. Um, this partnership sits within the uh, much wider geographical footprint of South Yorkshire and Bassett Law Integrated Care System, which is made up of 23 organisations. But on a mo more localised place perspective, the Sheffield Accountable Care Partnership provides a focus for collaborative approach to partnership working. And collectively, um, we employ 38,000 staff and makes up around 15% of the city's working age population. Examples of the collaborative work ongoing are around ageing well, promoting prevention, workforce and organisational development. Um, and across all of this is a small team of six, six or so individuals led by, we have an ACP director, Mark Tuckett. Um, that said, there is a much wider partnership landscape within Sheffield in the concept of anchor institutions. And it's also vitally important to consider our wider partners. And I've listed here some of the partners and could list, list many more, um, such as a diverse range of community and voluntary organisations, as, as Laura mentioned earlier, um, and groups, well as our private, such as our, you know, our, alongside our private in, um, industry colleagues. I think ultimately we're all delivering an offer, and whether that off, offer is to our patients, tenants, students, families, customers, or service users. There are some core anchor activities that are relevant to all of the organisations and bind us together. So, for example, that could be around the sustainability offer, travel and transport, the clean air agenda, procurement and especially workforce. I'm quite mindful that, that, that councils um, have focused on place for, for a long time um, and, and really that's enabled an anchor approach and I feel, I feel in some way the NHS is a bit late to the party um, on this and equally there's a really similar agenda for universities. The Civic University Commission led by um, Lord Kerslake um, provides an excellent example for a similar type of work. And it's all about looking at how we contribute to supporting the welfare of our communities. I want to move on now to um, share a bit of the progressive procurement work um, that we've undertaken. I was delighted to be asked to chair the progressive procurement work stream, which is part of the Sheffield City Partnerships work. Not being a procurement expert enabled me to ask the silly questions um, and to help bring to the group together. That said, they were a great group of individuals. Um, it wasn't that hard a job, but um, it, did, it did involve some real um, coercion in the early days to get commitment to the group, and I feel we've got that quite well now. The core aims of the group are, are as, as described there on the slide. Some of our current projects involve, um, the, we're looking at the living wage. Um, the City Council is an accredited living um, wage organisation. Um, but when we look at that across the city, there's some real challenges and some you know, very strong economic and organisational reasons that we can't become, at the moment, a living wage city. But it is a significant ambition for us. And particularly when we consider the impact that low wages has on vulnerable families. We know we have one in five children living in poverty and we have a number of families suffering hardship because of in-work poverty. Um, within the group as well, we've been collaborating and sharing top tips on the best way of measuring social value and the social value portal is a great way of, of looking at that. And more recently, we've been looking at how to showcase our progress as a city on sustainability. So 
I was asked to do some examples of um, sort of anchor activities and I'm really mindful that there are a number of other NHS organisations that are doing great work in this area um, but I've just given a few examples here. As a major employer in the city, as you saw we employ um, 17,000 staff so I think probably the largest employer in the city and we have a number of workforce schemes. Um, for example, we have a supportive internship scheme which is a project choice which is for young people with learning disabilities who are on our third cohort of individuals going through that scheme and we have a really strong relationships with local schools, our Sheffield College and the University Technical College and, and really good engagement with those organisations. But what I want to do is just share um, a small example of, of working with partners. As a trust, we were contacted by the local job centre about a, a local hotel closing down and a number of individuals were losing their jobs. Um, our facility director, Andrew Jones, went to meet with the general manager to see what roles we had and how they might, um, with the individuals that might be losing their jobs, they had cleaners, housekeepers and chefs available. We set up a, um, a small group, two of our managers went down with support from HR and um, they, they spoke to staff and they asked them, you know, sort of asked them how, sort of how we could help. Um, we looked about getting them onto NHS jobs, how we could register. Um, and we recruited 25 staff and the first person um, started on Monday as a supervisor within the trust. I'm really absolutely delighted about that. Um, and our facilities director just described that as about us reaching out to the community. Um, what was interesting in that though, it was a really interesting learning point. Uh, as, as an NHS organisation, we, we tend to advertise our roles as um, agenda for change, band six, band two, whatever. And we just put the salary for the year. Um, but this was really meaningless to some individuals. What they actually wanted was the hourly rate. Yeah. And when we gave them the hourly rate, for some individuals it was more than they'd been on, were currently receiving, so it was a better offer. Um, so moving forward for all future adverts for facilities, we're going to include the hourly rate on our adverts, which I think may be um, a more favourable offer. Um, just moving on to our development of, of the green plan. Um, again, with this, I'm really mindful of other partners. So Newcastle have done some fabulous work um, in this area. Um, but just to note, uh, for energy consumption, we've reduced um, gas consumption by over 50% in the last 10 years and electricity usage by 17%, which has reduced um, our CO2 emissions in that area by a third. Um, and we're also um, now supplied by energy, uh, sort of electricity from renewable sources. Um, and it was a really sort of moderate increase in, in our bills to do that. So it didn't actually, you know, ultimately cost us that much to move to renewable um, sources. We have lots of great examples in catering of, of working locally. We, we um, purchase sustainable and ethically sourced foods and 45% of our produce is either bought from local producers within our region or just um, the adjacent region. And we produce over 75% of our meals from scratch, which equates to an amazing 40,000 meals a week, um, which is quite stunning. Like most organisations, we are um, very mindful of the tra transport and travel agenda. Um, the NHS is a significant contributor to traffic, traffic in the city um, and in line with the Council's Clean Air Initiative, we're working to reduce that environmental impact, um, looking at journeys for both staff and patients to see how we can reduce those. And then, um, as I've mentioned earlier, we have a number of procurement developments. We've altered our tender threshold to try and encourage um, some of our local SMEs and local businesses to bid for work. Um, and now we've increased the threshold for going to formal tenders to 160,000. And we're very keen in terms of the inclusive growth agenda in terms of encouraging local businesses um, to bid. So just moving on to the top tips and my, my final slide. Um, I've just, some of these overlap with Laura's. I think we had really similar thoughts when we were looking at our top tips, um, but relationships and connect connectivity, I think it's important to never underestimate the, important, the importance of this. As Laura mentioned earlier, this is around connections at all levels of the organisation. But equally, it's important to address challenge relationships and 
you know, I've seen in a number of organisations in various reg regions where um, we're probably not very good at that and we, we should seek to overcome where you can see a relationship isn't working um, that well. Resources and priorities are, are, are quite tricky. I think we need to value the difference of the organisations across the area, but also identify commonalities. As an NHS trust, we have um, over 700 indicators that we're measured against, and they're primarily related to quality and access and, and, and entirely right indicators in that way. But I'm very mindful that other organisations will have their own priorities. Um, and it's important to try and find the common areas of collaboration that bind us together mm -hmm. so that, you know, we, we've talked about catering, security services, clean air, workforce, the prevention of gender. So there will be things that bring those organisations together despite the, the number of other tasks that organisations have to complete. I think negotiation is important. Seek first to listen, to understand. This takes a huge amount of time. And also I've put in, uh, my reflection was around forgiveness. There are times in our groups where we've had quite a tricky conversation. It's a case of recognising that, understanding it, and then moving on um, to the future. And then um, probably my most, it feels like my most important point around values and intent. Um, it's important to respect the culture, the climate, um, both the ethos and the operating environment that all institutions are working with and all communities are experiencing. Because ultimately we are all committed to supporting the welfare of the communities we serve. Thank you. Thank you. Um, really, really great to see those examples and just your reflections on what this has really translated and looked like when mm. working in the NHS context. So really, really helpful. And the last point you made about, again, the consensus around each anchor organization in their own right having very different organizational cultures and contexts, but how do you find those shared values and intent to really make this work and take this to the next level. So thank you both. Um, we're now entering the Q&A conversation part of the webinar. So thank you so much to everyone who's been writing in with questions. Um, please continue to do so. And we'll we have about 30 minutes allocated for this. So um, hopefully we'll get through as many as possible. But I guess my first question that's come up quite a bit then is just thinking about what would make this easier to do? Like what can be changing nationally to make this play out differently or more effectively locally? So the one ask you might have for government, for NHS England Improvement, for other system leaders, what would that be? And I, I'll, I'll have you both answer that, but maybe I'll start mm -hmm. with Sandy. I, well, I'm going to. I'm going to <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we, we actually spoke about this on the train yeah. on oh, the way down. And I think Laura sets the context really well okay, from well, a wider perspective. And okay. yes. yeah. Why do we do that? Yeah, Laura, yeah. 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 yeah, that's great. Okay, so I'm going to have to say it, resources. <laughs> We've yeah. talked a little yeah. bit about the context yeah. of public sector courts, and obviously that's a major factor um, in trying to take forward this work. And part of the reason why the anchor institutions um, concept is so helpful for us, because we're working at a time when we don't have the resources that we did have previously. Um, so we do a lot of this off the edge of our desks. So the, the procurement way that Sandy talked about, trying to um, resource that, find the capacity yeah. to make things happen in between meetings. And obviously that we involve people at quite high levels of the organisation in order to make that work. And they have even less time potentially to actually focus on taking forward some of those projects. Yeah. Um, so time and money to experiment in some of those areas is really important, I think. Um, but that's a that's an obvious one, I yeah, think. Um, but important. <laughs> yes, um, and I think more generally, whilst they might be sort of national asks, there's going to be a lot of local context to what those asks are. So yeah. there'll be different needs depending on local areas. So it's quite important to try and pin those national asks down to that local local place. Um, one thing that's particularly important, I think, is um, having the opportunity and resource to do research locally. We work really closely with our universities and we, we, we use them, that resource as much as possible, but it's always, you always want more of that. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the issues around workforce and employment and things like that, it's much more meaningful if you can understand really what that means for people in your place. Yeah. Um, and that helps you shape your interventions in a much more effective way rather than kind of national recommendations around that. So I'd kind of try and put a local slant on that, mm. on that national ask, yeah. really. Really helpful. Are you saying? Okay, yes. <laughs> I'll pick it up now. So I, I think the resources agenda is absolutely key. I think what is interesting though is this should be part of our core business and the, and the work that we do. I think where we've struggled is, is just things like setting up the meetings, minuting the meetings, yeah. just some of the um, more sort of business support type roles. Yeah. Um, and we find we, you know, 
we're personally struggling to do that. We're trying to pull in um, different elements of support. I think that that's been quite a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think it there is a risk of parachuting in a project manager who who almost then doesn't it doesn't feel like it's owned by the organisation. Yeah. So I think yeah. it, it does need to be part of our role. Yeah. And I'm I suppose I'm quite reflective of. Um, what works in one place won't necessarily work in another place because so, these need to be, you know, almost um, place-based approaches and, and whether that's the place working with primary care networks or yeah. other community groups and, and um, different communities, we need to be really mindful that we can't just lift and shift because yeah. um, we need to see what the needs of that community actually are before we then think about how we want to work together. Absolutely. Yeah. So I am hearing that even if these are all things that organizations are doing, like hiring, pur purchasing, mm. estates management, it is still applying a different lens to it. And that mm. does take resources and time and capacity and skills that might not be on hand in, in each mm. organization, yeah. given how the stress environment that everyone's working in. So thinking yeah. about how we can be building that capacity um, yes. is, is something that it seems resonates with you both. Mm. Um, yeah, and something that I think came up a lot with the other organizations mm. we interviewed for our work. Um, my next question, this is, and you touched a bit on, you mentioned research and partnering with universities, but a real challenge of this, I think, is measuring impact and mm. what difference mm. these strategies are even having mm. in local economies. And I would just like to know your approach, either as part of the partnership or even within your own, or own organization. How are you approaching measuring impact? Or is this something you're building a business case for? What has what has that looked like? I'd love to hear about it. Yeah, so this is something we've talked quite a lot about throughout the process. And we did make um, an explicit action that people will have seen in, in the um, slide around developing those inclusive Sheffield indicators that I mentioned. Yeah. Um, and that's really about helping us to better understand what, what the outcomes are that we're trying to achieve with that vision. So whereas we've got some quite broad kind of ambitions, um, it's really helpful for us to, to better understand what that looks like in terms of what we do, in terms of how we spend our money, in terms yeah. of where we direct our resources yeah. um, and how that feeds through. Um, so we're, we're going through a process. We did initially look at quite a lot of um, indicators that, are, that already exist, like the Happy City Index, like yeah. the Grant Thornton Vibrant mm. Economy, and they're all really helpful. Okay. They tend to look at the city level and it's yeah. quite helpful for us to go go beyond that and, and look at because we as I mentioned we've got quite a lot of um, geographical inequality so it's helpful for us to drill down yeah uh, and we felt that we wanted to develop something more bespoke for Sheffield that really reflected what our vision is I mentioned that kind of sense of um, collectivism and that ethos yeah. that we have so that was quite important to us um, one of the um, projects that we're doing um, to develop that is we're working with uh, University of Sheffield as part of a wider national a project called Cypher. Yeah. I don't know what the acronym stands for, I'm afraid, but it's an interesting project. Um, and they're supporting us around that indicator where we've also got some embedded researchers within the council who are doing some work at the moment to, to build that more bespoke indicator. So we're, we're going to come up with something quite soon, hopefully, but then it's still a learning process. So we're trying to pull in all the learning from that big national project um, from Cypher. One of the key elements of it for us is really how do we combine the quantitative data with the qualitative insights that we're, we're working hard to get? Because mm -hmm. that's, that's what it would make it really meaningful. Um, and the other um, key thing really is that um, obviously, as Sandy mentioned, there are lots of indicators um, mm -hmm. and lots of different kind of ways that we assess our progress within the organisations. And what we want from this is something that doesn't just sit behind this one framework, but that yeah. can be useful, can be used in like um, you can pick and choose what you need and take based on what your strategies are and that yeah. can inform the development of future strategies as well. Um, so we want it to be adaptable in that way um, so that even though you have your core business, when you're looking, for example, at workforce or procurement, that this will be there to help you understand how what you're doing might actually impact on the outcomes you're, you're trying to achieve. Absolutely. Mm. Would you like to come on any So, that? yeah, just, just a few points. I think I am really mindful about adding any any extra sort of metrics or indicators. We need to be really careful about yeah. how we take that forward. That said, I've seen some really great examples of impact assessments, and, and particularly I'd say the voluntary sector are really good at seeking to um, reflect that. Um, but equally, I do think we need to be really careful about um, almost defining causation in a complex system. Yeah. It's really hard to know this intervention gave that outcome. Mm, yeah. and, and there's so many other interventions that may have impacted on that, the general um, lived experience of, the, of that community and, and individuals in that community. So, mm. so it, it's, as we know, there's a huge amount of research in this area. It is really tricky 
to to measure the impact and the outcomes from from any intervention that we do. Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, you made a point there. It kind of connects to one of the questions we've heard, but. In the NHS context, and I'm sure it's in my local government, there are so many performance metrics that yes. already exist yeah. and you know, targets and things. I guess, are any of these uh, existing me metrics, are they supporting this work? Are they distracting from this work? Um, how have you, I've, I've, yeah, how has um, that felt? I, I think in terms of distraction, you have to do both. So, yeah. um, you know, as an acute trust, we obviously have our urgency emergency care targets. Yeah. Um, we have to deliver safe and effective yeah. uh, quality care to, to our patients. Yeah. Um, so we still have to do that as well as as well as this wider collaborative work. I don't yeah. think it, it's yeah. uh, it's not either. Or, yeah. You just have to do both. Um, and, and you know, while, whilst the NHS as a whole hasn't hasn't been hit by the austerity measures, it still felt quite challenging yeah, in absolutely. the NHS. And and you know, and I appreciate our partners have had even more challenges. Um, I suppose that doesn't make either of those challenges right. Um, yeah. it's, it's not that this is all right. It, it's, it's tough for everybody, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think, but your point about being, if we are going to create more performance metrics as valuable as they can be, just being really intentional about them and are they adding yeah. to, are they needed compared within what we already have and mm. just being quite intentional mm. about it, which it sounds like Sheffield has been in, mm. in your approach to the partnership. So that's, mm. that's really in, valuable to hear. Um, I have a question. This is a, a broader one about engagement. So mm. I think you both touched on how this is really about your local local people and communities. And mm. just would like to hear how have local people engaged in this agenda? How are mm. they feeding into the strategy itself? And, and what has been your approach to that? And maybe I'll have Laura start mm. with that. So a really good question. Like like the whole thing. <laughs> the key is that this is a learning process for us. Yeah. And I'm mindful yeah. to say that. Um, so we did kind of identify really early on the board members, Sandy and others, that we really wanted to um, involve the local Sheffield people in what that vision looked like in order for it to be meaningful. Um, and in particular, that we wanted to reach people who we wouldn't ordinarily um, hear from um, and make sure that they, they were heard. Um, so as part of that process, really, we, we had to find different ways of doing that. So whereas yeah. in the past, we've, we've we've tended to reach out through events, through online consultation, those kind of things. We thought quite long and hard with our partners about actually, we need to go to people rather than expecting them to come to us. Yeah. Um, mm. And we developed, I had the, the slide up there with the, the poster with the little stick person on. Yeah. And that was a what looks like a really simple methodology, but actually quite a lot of, <laughs> of time and effort and, uh, yeah. went into that. Um, and that was really something that we used as a tool so that we could work through our partners again capacity comes into it so we didn't have tons of people ready to go out and have these conversations so we had to work with our existing groups so we worked for Sheffield College and their um, classes at English as a second language classes for example yeah. we worked through libraries we worked through our community groups in our community anchor organizations and they used their existing kind of contacts with people their existing sessions to have these conversations um, and that was a really sort of positive way of doing it especially to help us kind of um, as I mentioned, make, take a more asset-based approach. So it wasn't just about a kind of what do we want from you and that kind of transaction, what do you want from us? It was much more about what, what can we do together? What are our strengths? Mm -hmm. um, and where can mm -hmm. we kind of build on that together? Um, so that's been yeah. a really positive process. Um, it was learning, it wasn't systematic. So we haven't got a systematic overview of what people from different communities think. Um, and we didn't, we weren't able to make sure that we covered all the protected characteristics and all the different geographies. So we'd like to do more of that definitely. Um, and we did bring that together in an event where all the city leaders came together and, and looked at those documents and really saw that lived experience and that voice for themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and we're doing more, more work on that this year. So it's yeah. an ongoing process. And I, I think we're really aware there's, there's a huge amount more work that we can do. We, mm -hmm. I feel like we've only just started yes. that um, yep. real big, big engagement piece. We know there will be um, parts and uh, individuals in Sheffield that actually don't feel engaged at all yes. in what we're doing and probably don't even know what we're doing, yeah. If, yeah. if I'm honest. Um, so there's a huge you know, amount more work to do. Um, but but doing that in the right way, some of our partners on the on the board will, will you know, are able to bring that voice, aren't they, as well yes. as, and, and then advising is in quite strong terms at times in terms of better ways of engaging and, and better things that we can do.
Yes. Absolutely. And just enthusiasm coming in from some of our participants mm -hmm. saying that they love the All term right. Sheffielders. Sheffielders, <laughs> and that's <laughs> really okay. um, <laughs> how a real sense of community. It's so not it's difficult to yeah. <laughs> um, I'm interested, like, so yeah. of course it's essential, the communities that you work in, engaging local people, but I'm also, um, and perhaps I'll have Sandy pick this one up, but mm. how about your staff? Like, how cited are they, the workforce, to this agenda and what that they're part of this partnership? Is that is it something yeah. that you've been starting I, to think about how to raise awareness? So I would or, say this yeah. is really early days. Yeah. Um, we're currently just rewriting our strategy mo yeah. moving forward from obviously um, April yeah. and very much now uh, it looks like a very different strategy than we had three, four mm. years ago. So that will include the Be Green agenda and all the work yeah. we're doing. It will um, include the Anchor Institution work. We've had the conversation at our board about you know, are we an anchor institution? What does that mean? Yeah. Um, et cetera. And I, I see a real um, hunger from staff to get involved yeah. in this. Um, I get regular emails, I get regular Twitter um, comments. Um, so I think um, there's a real willingness and an appetite to take this forward. We just need to help enable that and support our staff to get involved. Absolutely. And I think um, you've, you've touched on this a bit, but a lot of questions have come in. Um, beyond communities directly, but also how, what is the role of kind of voluntary sector organizations mm. within this and how have they been involved or mm. proactive as part of this partnership? Any, any reflections or thoughts on that? Yeah, so we have voluntary sector representatives on the Sheffield City Partnership and obviously various other partnerships um, in the city. We have Voluntary Action Sheffield sit on there and we've got a representative from um, a community anchor, one of our Manor yeah. and Castle Development Trust as well. Um, we also have the Dean of Sheffield Cathedral, so we've got mm. the faith sector represented on there. Um, and they've really been front and centre, obviously, of this engagement work that we've done, and it's been a really collaborative process. So it's really sitting down with them and, yeah. and, and actually sitting down with the people within their organisations, so not just the leaders of those organisations, but yeah. the people who are leading the groups, the people who will be facilitating. Um, actually, that, that's come through, you know, in other sectors like the police where we've worked with the PCSOs mm. and, you know, really getting to the people who mm. are actually having the contact. And that's been really important. So, yeah, the, the voluntary sector have been very much embedded in this process. Um, we work really closely with them. Absolutely. And mm. is that also the experience in the NHS? Or yes, is it similar. Yeah. And I, I would say there are different connections across the organisation, yeah. obviously. Um, the, the system that, that the Trust works in, that there are all various connections with, with members of the volunteering community sector. Um, I think we could probably work better mm. together still again, if I'm brutally mm. honest again, I yeah. still think there's more work we can do. Um, mm. I think some of that takes time and some of that is just understanding the different offer that each organisation in each mm. group can bring. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we've gotten a couple of questions kind of mm. on this broader theme, I guess, of partnership and having mm. different anchors work together mm. and kind of the complexities with that, which you both have spoken to. Mm. But I'm curious, um, so we have a question of, how do you manage a partnership in a way that avoids, I guess, one single anchor institution within the collaborative really taking the leadership mm. role on it and others following? Or is, or is that okay dynamic? Is it like how much mm. in a collaborative is it every anchor on equal footing or is it okay that you know as you've kind of acknowledged this is this is pretty new terrain for a lot of NHS mm. organizations whereas the university sector and local government has kind of been thinking about place in a, in a different way for a mm. longer time and has that been um, how has that dynamic played out if at all in Sheffield mm. I'd be curious to know. That's a very interesting question <laughs> yeah. actually yeah. it's a really pertinent Don't know question. if there's a right yeah. answer if I... <laughs> So, I mean, I, I obviously, in my role, I kind of sit between the council and the Sheffield City Partnership. So I, I kind mm. of represent the partners yeah. and work really closely mm. with the partners, um, as well as kind of having my role within the council. So mm. I kind of, I'm, I'm coming at it from, from those perspectives. And I think that um, actually really one taking the leadership is probably not a massive issue if that if that happens. Although I feel like we're moving, we move together quite well together as a partnership. I think actually if people come and they want to be involved and they want to take a leadership and I'm they want to take, take to, to push it through, then I'm, yes, yes, let's do it. And and actually kind of having that approach where you're kind of open to that and saying, oh, mm. well, if this institution really mm. wants to run with that, then brilliant, let's go with that. And really playing to the strengths of the organisation. Yeah. So yeah. it probably makes sense within any partnership that some people lead more on, on yeah, one so. area and mm. others lead more on another. So. And I do think they're heard, certainly, in the partnership board. I think you know individuals and, and organisations feel... Like I get a sense they have a voice. I don't get any real sense of hierarchy that plays out. Um, 
and, and certainly just reflecting on the board meetings in terms of the contribution, it, it mm. feels like um, there's a real respect for the organisations mm. in the room. We do have an independent chair as well, Lord yeah. David Blunkett, so it's quite good yeah. to have an independent chair independent to help chair, you yes. to, to do that as well. And we have public observers as well, so we, yes. we seek to be... Thank you again. I'd, I'd say they're probably yeah. quite few, but um, yeah. yeah, it's an opportunity there. Yeah, and as yes. I mentioned, um, the fact that we actually would be on the partners on the board as well. So actually, I work quite a lot with people who are not on the partnership board as partners. Yeah. So I'll reach out to them and see what mm. we can do together. Absolutely. Mm. Um, I guess carrying on with this theme of place, another, I think, a question we get a lot in this work, and I think given kind of the changing context around us, is when we hit, classically when you think of ink or institutions, you think of organizations, but the whole direction of travel is really about systems and places. And indeed, yeah. you guys are a collective of anchors working together as a system to make change happen. But of course, a lot of the actual carrying out procurement practices and policies and hiring practices happens at the organization. So I guess it's, you know, where. What needs to happen at the organizational level versus what happens at the system level? And, where, and how do you kind of conceive of being an anchor in these two different ways? Mm. It's a really complex question, maybe a bit abstract, but yeah. if, if, um, any thoughts mm. on, yeah, kind of the role of systems versus yes. the role of organizations, given mm. both are important, but it looks really different. I think for me, at an organizational level, it's, it's just um, to enable and respect the time that it takes mm. to collaborate with your partners. That, that, you know, whether that's traveling to meetings because a face-to-face -face meeting in this instance is better than just being on the phone or, yeah. um, but actually enabling that and supporting that, mm. that's a good thing to do rather than a distraction from core business. And then at a system level, for me, there's something about valuing difference. We, yeah. We're all different organizations. Mm. We, as I've mentioned, we have different um, drivers, intent mm. and, and aims, but all understanding and really valuing that across across yeah. the whole partnership. That's really mm. important, I think, mm. to keep in mind anything mm. from your perspective. Yeah, I think that um, at a systems level, what that allows you to do is to see that bigger picture together. Mm. And actually, when you work together to do that, that's even stronger because you can kind of, you can share that, that perspective. Um, whereas it, within your own organisation, then you're seeing how that translates to how you do things. So I think that the two kind of really go together and it's quite hard to have one without the other really because yeah, the bigger yeah. picture is not meaningful if it's not um, working through your organisations. And if you're only working within your organisation, then that, that the, um, the vision that I talked about, the why are we doing this, where yeah. are we trying to get to, what are we trying to achieve with this, it's easy to lose sight of that if you don't have that, that systems approach as well. Yep, mm -hmm. absolutely. And, um, I get. I mean, one thing we've often heard within other places that are trying to form anchor collaboratives is I, I think we can use procurement as an example where a, a lot of the anchor organizations might have been routine already able to contract, like applying 10% social value to their procurement mm. processes or 15% mm. or the NHS is starting from a different baseline. And that can be really challenging given mm. the complexity around procurement and the NHS realm so I think just but having that flexibility we're like maybe we can't start at 15% mm. but the but we know we want to shift towards that and and setting a common goal but just understanding that each organization is different valuing those differences and just accepting that this might play out differently within the organizations but at least we have that common aim does that mm. resonate to how it feels in Sheffield mm. yes definitely yeah. yeah I'd say that and the of. theme the themes yeah. are really similar as yeah. I mentioned yeah. it's um Yes, it's, it's just about shared learning, that isn't it? And recognizing where your strengths and weaknesses are, really. Yeah. 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 And I guess um, there there has been specific questions around procurement. Um, a lot mm. of interest in that. And I think one thing we often hear is that you know procurement in the NHS is very centralized, and a lot of people are mm. impressed with organizations like in Sheffield and other and other places where you have been able to find ways of being a bit more flexible and shifting more spend locally. And I would just like to know, Sandy, from your perspective, like where have there been the greatest barriers to getting this done? Or has um, it kind of a perception rather than a real barrier? So, so there are competing priorities. Yeah. So the Carter Review has mm. obviously centralized, yeah. um, or seeking to centralize mm -hmm. a lot more the procurement activity, yeah. which, which then distracts um, from the more localized approach. Yeah. But also, um, the scale of the organisation also means that some of our local providers actually can't cope with the demand that we, mm. we require, so we have to um, go right. go wider. Mm. Um, and you know, some of our, our medication, for example, just isn't isn't produced in this country even, yeah. so we have to do that uh, yeah. internationally procure um, through different areas. So 
there is a bit of a, a sort of competing priorities there that we need to work through and where we can um, procure locally, we should be doing that. Um, we, um, and and ju just all, all of the research would indicate that the, the wider inclusive growth sort of initiatives are the right thing to do. Yeah. And I think do it where you can and where you can't, then we need to go on the, the bigger sort of much, much larger sort of group procurements or whatever. Absolutely. Um, that, I think that's that's really helpful to keep in mind. And I guess when you were shifting spend locally and this, for both of you, mm. um, were those relationships you already had or did you have to kind of go out and map and find out like who were our what local providers? Know. What did that look like? I guess, where, where did you start? And did the supplier yeah. events. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so yes. I mean, I'm, in terms of that side of the work, I say the mm. procurement, <laughs> the, the yeah. procurement particularly, um, Philip Leonard within Sheffield City Council really led on a lot of that. Yeah. Mm. Obviously, that um, they have a huge resource in, in, in being able to actually really look at the local economy through their contracts mm. and, and actually analyse that in a really meaningful way. Um, I think that it's, it's important to sort of note that it's not just about what you spend locally, but it's also about that kind of added social value and what kind of employers that you are procuring yeah. with and the yeah. ethical side of that as well, mm. which came through quite strongly um, in that. Um, and the, the process of kind of using that research to understand the local economy did also reveal that because there can be tensions with that. There can be tensions yeah. between spending locally and actually, for example, um, spending with people who might pay the real living wage because mm. you might be predominantly looking to um, SMEs locally yeah. and that might be more difficult for them. So that enters a whole new avenue of how you actually really meaningfully work with people in your local economy to hit those kind of shared targets and find those shared values and outcomes that, that you all want. Yep, absolutely. Thank you. Um, we've got about five minutes left, um, but so maybe time for just one quick question. And maybe, uh, Sandy, I'll pose it to you just, um, or, or either of you. But is this, if at all, how is this factoring into kind of your ICS STP plan? Is that, um, is this linked up? Is it a bit so, separate? So I think collectively yeah. uh, that works together. I think where the anchor institution type approach works best, though, is that place. Mm. And, and um, within the South Yorkshire and Bassett Law ICS, we obviously have five places yep. um, that make up the ICS. Um, I, I can't really envisage a time when I may be going to, say, Rotherham or Doncaster and applying the anchor institution mm. approach there, in yeah. that city because it is around local partners. Yeah, it's around what good. does this mean for our communities? What does this, you know, how do we work with our primary care networks? How do we work with yeah. others um, on a very localised level? Um, so I, I see the ICS approach as, as a collaboration of, of all of the anchor institution approach at place mm -hmm. to then make up the ICS. And, uh, you, you know, mm. it sort of collectively we, we take that approach together. Absolutely. Um, it's, and it's interesting that the, it just shows the complexity around how you define place within these different partnerships mm, yes. and, and what's local and, and what fits within one strategy and another, but how they can all be vehicles, I guess, for re signaling and reinforcing yes. the same set of priorities. Yes. We can but, set um, the tone set at the an tone, ICS yeah. level. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Yes. Um, yeah. That's really encouraging, I yes. think, to hear. It resonates with some of the, what we've heard in our conversations with others. Mm. Um, well, thank mm. you so much both. That was a really interesting conversation, so much food for thought. And I think just exciting to see um, how anchors are working together mm. in a community to really drive this forward and, and partner in a different way. Partnership's the name of the game, mm. I think, um, when healthcare and beyond. So it's just um, exciting to see how this is playing out um, in Sheffield. So thank you so much. And just to close then, I just want to say a bit about the Health Foundation's future work in this area and what I mentioned at the start about our plans with uh, moving forward with NHS single improvement. And just to say that one of the key findings in our report was that there's a lot of really interesting, exciting, important work happening, but it's not necessarily been an embedded part of how the system mm. sees itself as an anchor or a, you know, a part of organizational strategies. Sheffield probably being one of the more mature examples we have. So we're really invested in this question of how do we, how we mainstream this idea? How do we continue to build a raise, raise awareness and support systems to apply this in their own work? And that's a question we're taking on and thinking about how do we yeah, build that knowledge and capability so that this can be go further. And that's something we're really excited to be sharing our work with in this space in the months to come. So in terms of next steps, um, there'll be an opportunity for everyone who's signed up today to register your interest if you'd like to know more about that partnership and what we'll be doing in this area. So please do uh, stay in touch and stay involved. Um, other ways though, so if you have any questions or queries that we weren't able to get to today, please give us an email, be in touch. and. Um, if you have thoughts on what we should be doing and prioritizing or what 
more support is needed that we really want to hear that um, so definitely um, shoot us an email and and I mentioned our report at the start that is chock full of information and other examples of where things are happening so do find that on our website and just want to close by thanking you all for listening in today and thanking our our speakers from Sheffield this has been a brilliant conversation and thank you enjoy the rest of your afternoons bye thank now you. Thank you.